Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the broadcast. Well, we've got a very special guest in our studio. So if you're watching on TV or Facebook or Periscope, or wherever you get your social media feed, or if you're listening to us on radio, our friend John Schneider's here. And i got to tell a story. I'm so glad to this, be here. Yeah, I am glad you're here, too. But this is a true story, folks. So when we first started this radio broadcast in 1997, I believe it was, we get a call. We were in a studio in Atlanta then, much smaller than this. Much more, much smaller organization than we are now, and we get a call, and the and the screener says, "There's a guy saying he's he's John Schneider on the phone," and and could that possibly be? And I said, "No, it's not possible. I mean, it could be possible, but not likely." He put me through so much. So said, talk. About- he put me through this. so much. He said, "He said, okay, well then, uh, then John Schneider, um, what uh, what was Boss Hog eating in the first episode of Dukes of?" I said, "Raw liver." Of course. Let me talk to Jay. And uh, and so he put he asked me a couple of questions. Finally, I guess he was talking to you on the other line. And he then, was. Uh, and they then were putting I it up on, on the a phone. screen, and I'm saying it can't be. Yeah, and I was I was driving down PCH. You know, I did my I did my time yep. on the left coast yep. there. Yeah. So I was driving down PCH, and you were talking about something on the radio, and I thought, my God, it's so great. And this was '97. Yeah. So we, I mean, they're crazier now, but they yeah. were still crazy then. Yeah. But it's like. Thank God there's somebody out there that is actually the voice of reason. So I've got to tell you this. So. Yes, and I think that's what I told you. Well, when, you when, did say yeah. that, which I appreciate. Yeah. So <laughs> this, is, this is also true. Story. The gal that was in the office, I mean, it was a small, I mean, you know, you're in our media center here. It's a big office. This, but this, was, this was like, you know, three people in an office. Michelle she still works with us. And she was literally, I mean, the joke is your biggest fan. I mean, she is literally I your, love your biggest fan. I she love was that. having a meltdown. <laughs> in a good way. But anyway, so there you have it. So we've known each other. We've met each other in other times, too. But we've known each other via radio for a long time. For a I, long, long time. I want to yes. talk to you. We're going to, by the way, so we've got a really unique opportunity because John is not just an actor. He's also a tremendous musician, singer. And we're going to be uh, playing upstairs in a few minutes with our band. And Can't you're going to actually hear some of the music. So, uh It'll be a lot of fun, and there's a couple of original tunes that uh, John's got. And I one think in you particular. Like. I think yeah, I think you, people uh... are going to like it. We'll save it for <laughs> okay. for the surprise, but it's gonna it'll it'll be great. But I, I thought I'm glad you're here, and we, we could talk a little bit. So, give me your view, kind of state of the play right now. How you see kind of the United States, just the the country. How you you travel all over, obviously still well, acting, I tell still you, the, the one word that I don't hear uh, I don't hear people saying a lot, and I think they should is what I see, and we go everywhere. Right, is opportunity. Yeah. Um, I see opportunity wherever we go. I have never seen the country more, I'm not even going to say divided, because I, I can't even, I can't figure out a way to, to validate the opposition's uh, perspective. Well, they think they're, I mean, the interesting thing about that is just coming out of the impeachment hearing a little while ago. And thank you on it, behalf of uh, all the, it was all our the United States citizens, I, I, legal I, I United that. States yeah, citizens. Well, I want to thank you for I appreciate everything that, but you did. I will tell you what it is. It's, there, there is, there, they actually think, it's not like they're just mouthing this. Right. So when you see the, even the debates going on right now, and, and Bernie Sanders is talking about democratic socialism, they, they actually mean it. I mean, this is they, they what believe in it. the world. Do they not realize that, that that's something you can crawl into, but you've got to shoot your way out? Yeah. Let me ask you this. We're going to be taking a break. Then we're going to come back okay. with you. If people want to find out what you're doing, what you're up to, where's the best place to go? John Schneider Studios dot com. John, John Schneider Studios. We'll link that up to on our Facebook com. page and we'll get that out. So John Schneider Studios dot com. All right. So we're having a good time, which is, you know, it's nice to just have a good time on radio and everything doesn't have to be so intense. We're having a, a good time. We're going to be uh, coming you back. You must just be relieved. I, I am, I, we only have a minute before the break. Okay. Yes, except I've got three Supreme Court cases in a matter of weeks. But compared to, it's like my wife said, okay, really? Compared to what you just went through? Yeah. I think you can handle an hour argument. So I think, you know, yeah. it'll be fine. I mean, we'll get, we'll get to that, but you got to prepare, of course. All right, we're taking a break. We come back. We're going to have uh, more with John Schneider. Let me tell you this also. We're having a lot of fun getting this music together, and we're going to be releasing. There'll be a video release on this, and he's got a great tune. Come, you can just save it. We'll save it, but we're having fun with it. All right, we're taking a break. Don't forget, if you want to find out what's going on, johnschneiderstudios.com. If you want to get information about the ACLJ, you know how to do that, aclj.org. That's aclj.org. You also got Facebook, Twitter. Got Facebook, but uh, the links to all that are on all right, my so johnschneiderstudios.com. go to the website and you can get links to everything. Oh, I have right. an app. I have an app called John Schneider. It'll take you everywhere. It's a stalker's got, best friend. The man has an app. I have an app. All right, we'll be back with more John Schneider in a moment. Folks, the ACLJ is doing work all across the country on all the issues that you care about, all across the world. 
on the issues you care about. And we're able to broadcast it to you because of your support. We're able to do the work in our country because of your support. We're able to do the work internationally because of your financial support. And this is a great time to make a financial contribution to the ACLJ because it's a matching challenge month. What does that mean? We have a group of donors ready to match every donation that comes into the ACLJ right now at aclj.org. You're literally doubling the impact of your donation. Your $25 donation, that's what you're charging your credit card, but that's like $50 for us to ACLJ. No amount too small, no amount too big. It all makes a huge impact. Go to aclj.org, be part of our matching challenge and donate today. It's a critical time for our nation and our world. With so many challenges facing our country, the work of the American Center for Law and Justice has never been more important. And during this time of uncertainty, there's no better way to support the ACLJ than through online giving. ACLJ Chief Counsel, Jay Sekulo. We truly appreciate your financial support. Without it, it would be impossible to do our work here and around the globe. And the best way to support our work is to make your financial gifts online at aclj.org. Online giving, simple and secure. And by making an online gift, your support goes to work immediately, enabling the ACLJ to defend human life, to stand up for our good friend Israel, to work to uncover the corrupt deep state in Washington, and so much more. Make a difference today. Support the work of the ACLJ online at aclj.org. Every dollar makes a difference. Give today online at aclj.org. So we're with our, our good friend John Schneider, and we're talking about politics, we're talking about life. I want to talk to you about, in the environment that you work in, music, actor, right? Yeah. Uh, the arts. Yeah. It's the divide, that, I mean, you're you're in the minority within your, your profession, although there's a vocal minority within your profession. Well, you know, I've always believed that if you didn't believe something enough to say it yeah. publicly, then you probably didn't believe it. Yeah. Very much, and uh, I'm not sure why my my uh, my fellow actors uh, have. It, it's really actors, I think, more than musicians. Musicians yeah. have a tendency to be more outspoken uh, and more honest about their belief system. Yeah. But uh, the actor types, I I don't know why. It's almost like the old studio system where an actor was really basically bought by the and studio. was afraid, or was actually not even afraid. We used to have a thing called a morals clause. Mm -hmm. And a morals clause uh, from CBS, ABC, NBC, whoever had that in their contract, uh, they could really, it was very loosely defined. So whatever they felt was against their morals clause that was not written out, it was, that's all it was, the morals yeah. clause, uh, then they had reason to dismiss you. And that was as early as uh, when I started Dukes in 78. I had a morals clause in there. I'm not sure when standards and practices and all that went away, but they're still acting as if if I don't if I don't ride this horse publicly, then I'm going to get, I'm going to lose my who, who said it? I can't remember I'm going to lose my cinchy job. Yeah, the quite the problem is I mean I saw this firsthand. I mean I, I got during the impeachment hearing I got a lot of great emails. I have to say a lot of people were praying for us. A lot of people were great. I got some stuff so you wouldn't. I mean. Oh. I may mean, just hit delete, <laughs> hit delete, oh, yeah. delete. I've got haters no... now on, on my YouTube channel that I, I never really had haters before. Yeah. You know, people well, love Dukes, they love Smallville. It's like, oh, this is really great. The, welcome to the club. Yeah, and all of a sudden, yeah, these especially on YouTube. My yeah. YouTube channel is doing great. Yep. Uh, Kid Rock told me, he said, you keep saying your truth to your people. He said, yes, you're going to aggravate more people every day than you'll ever get to meet. But... At the same time, you will be strengthening your core, your core audience. That's true. If you continue to tell the truth, so when they, your truth, when me, the impeachment, your truth, when the impeachment trial was going on, and it was, you know, it was a two. I love that you can laugh was, about. Well, it. you have to laugh at it now. It's over. So two weeks of of this. So Logan, <laughs> Logan kept saying, "When I get back, and we get back late, I mean, it'd be like one o'clock and morning. Don't look at your Twitter feed. Do not <laughs> do not look, look at Twitter." <laughs> I said that bad. He just said, "Do not look at Twitter." I will admit, one time I did. It was like you opened it up, and it was like you know the horror movie, bah! Oh, and yeah, you just yeah. want to put it back in again. Well, you know they say if you don't have any opposition, then you're not a good player. You know, um, if you're not double teamed, you're yeah. probably not Winston a good player. Winston Churchill said, uh, "People are speaking bad about you." He said, "Good. That means you're standing up for something." There you go. So I want to talk about. I mean, I think from our generation and and, and to this day, the Dukes was huge. 
Um, the show. Is it true that they shot the opening of that in Oxford, Georgia? Did you? Uh, yeah, at the college. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Emory where the first Oxford. the first jump was. Yeah, okay, so Emory my, and Oxford. <laughs> my sister calls me yesterday because she knows you're coming on, and she goes, "You know, I was at I was at Emory at the Oxford campus when they shot it. That was 1978, November, yep. yeah, November yeah, yeah. So 1978. Yeah. There you go. I so, remember it well. That yeah. was the first time. Did but, you have any idea that it would become this iconic program when you first? Say, I was 18 years old. I didn't know there was such thing as a failed television show. Right. And Smokey and the Bandit had just taken over the world, a, right. a $2 million movie that made $269 million before VHS. Good return on investment. Right? Good yeah. return on investment. And it was made, I was in it, kind of. Yep. I, I lied and climbed in there. And it, that's in my book, it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called My Life, My Way. You yep. want to know about that? Read that. Okay. But um, so trucks and fast cars and all all that seemed to me like Dukes of Hazard should be the the uh, number one show in the country and within about 3 weeks it was, Did, was and they're was still you, was talking quick, about it it was that quick it was right we were top 20 the first night we were I remember on. that I remember yeah. the TV guide <laughs> oh you want to date yourself but it's okay and they Talk. they said the hot show out of you know this yes. is the hot show Yes, and, but before before there was Twitter and any yeah. of this kind of stuff, yeah. uh, there was a, a reviewer in California because uh, Waylon would say at the yeah. first commercial break, "Dukes of Hazard will continue." Right, and this guy grabbed a hold of that and he said, "If this show continues, I will take the executive producer to dinner anywhere he wants." This is the worst thing I've ever seen on television. <laughs> so it continued. The executive producer called him and wound up he had to take him to. Uh, Paul Picard's favorite restaurant in Paris. Oh, there you go. That's and he did good. it, to his credit. He did? He okay. did it. So, I, mean, I, I lived in New York. I moved to Atlanta when I was almost 16 years old. So I, I watched the show. I think I was already in college. And it connected to me, and I was not, you know, from Hazard County. <laughs> I think, get me, I'm from Mount Kisco, yeah, which, you know. I, I was from Brooklyn. So, so, oh, right. wow. Well, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. A, a little bit bigger yeah. small town. Yeah. I'm from a village, the yeah. village of Mount Kisco. Yeah. I have, I think it had to do with our moral code and our, yep. our the fact that everybody needed everybody. We yeah. had a, a great sense of community. Yes. There was no me. Um, but I tell you, if you go a mile from where we are now, yep. you go back, drive to Nashville, not on 65, yep. drive back there, it will look exactly like the Dukes of Hazard. So the view that people have in 2020, the overwhelming majority of people in this country have the same view right now that they did when they first watched the show in 1979. All right, so Facebook and Periscope and wherever else you're watching us right now, we're going to go to uh, the the tune, uh, John Schneider's song, Trump Card. Uh, They played with the band. But what I want to encourage you to do is buy the song. And all you have to do is go over to anywhere you get your music, Amazon, iTunes, uh, Spotify, whatever it might be. Or just go to John's website at johnschneiderstudios.com, download the music, purchase the music. It's a great tune. Take a listen. We were playing high stakes poker, everything on the line. I put her on kings, him on queens, I was showing a pair of knights. New counting on the cards they held, couldn't comprehend. Oh, they're playing silly games, I had the winning hand. I got my trump card. So the dealer burned him one last card, laid that river down. The room got deathly quiet. You couldn't hear a sound. They thought that I was bluffing, and no way that I could win. They should have seen their faces when I yelled.
face there up your sleeve When I'm holding down Hand like this is all I'll ever need Got my trunk card I don't need an ace in the hole Cause I'm holding on to something good as gold I got my trunk card Folks, the ACLJ is doing work all across the country on all the issues that you care about, all across the world on the issues you care about. And we're able to broadcast it to you because of your support. We're able to do the work in our country because of your support. We're able to do the work internationally because of your financial support. And this is a great time to make a financial contribution to the ACLJ because it's a matching challenge month. What does that mean? We have a group of donors ready to match every donation that comes into the ACLJ right now at aclj.org. You're literally doubling the impact of your donation. Your $25 donation, that's where you're charging your credit card, but that's like $50 for us to ACLJ. No amount too small, no amount too big. It all makes a huge impact. Go to aclj.org, be part of our matching challenge and donate today. It's a critical time for our nation and our world. With so many challenges facing our country, the work of the American Center for Law and Justice has never been more important. And during this time of uncertainty, there's no better way to support the ACLJ than through online giving. ACLJ Chief Counsel, Jay Sekula. We truly appreciate your financial support. Without it, it would be impossible to do our work here and around the globe. And the best way to support our work is to make your financial gifts online at aclj.org. Online giving, simple and secure. And by making an online gift, your support goes to work immediately, enabling the ACLJ to defend human life, to stand up for our good friend Israel, to work to uncover the corrupt deep state in Washington, and so much more. Make a difference today. Support the work of the ACLJ online at aclj.org. Every dollar makes a difference. Give today online at aclj.org. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the broadcast. We're with our friend John Schneider. You know him from his acting career, his music, of course, uh, the famous Dukes of Hazard, Smallville, and countless others. But I wanna, we were talking about the Dukes, and we'll talk about Smallville, too, because you, you draw a connect. Um, you, you mentioned the fact that if you go a mile down the road for our studio, it kind of is the feel of that of yeah. of the Dukes of Hazard. It looks I mean, like Dukes of Hazard, yeah. So talk to me. tell me about the car for a moment. The, the car was a Dodge... Dodge Charger. Charger. It was a 1969 Dodge Charger. You're not going to believe this. Uh oh. Yep. I didn't. It was not orange. I had. It now, could be. It was in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. I had a 1969 Dodge Charger. No kidding. Yeah, it, it was actually my mother drove it, and then went to college. She said, "Here." So I had. I had the Dodge. Char I should have kept. You know, it. I tell people that you have one, don't you? I do. I, we have two. You have two of them. I told I told people that 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 when I first saw the General Lee and I saw yeah. Daisy's Roadrunner, yep. right? I was th I was thinking, please God, let the Roadrunner be my car, because as far as I was concerned, the Charger was was an old woman's car from not pardon me, mom, no, but my, it was an old lady's car she's from, in heaven, she'll be from fine. Dragnet. <laughs> yeah, right. Right, it was this big boxy thing, yeah. which which made it really easy to slide around corners and yeah. things. So it was a perfect car, had a great uh, door, so you could yeah. get your butt on there yeah. and slide in the window. Yeah. But uh, I do remember thinking, oh my gosh, this I guess is it was uh, this I think car. Uh. But Dukes was so much fun. We started in Georgia, filming in Georgia in '78, yep. uh, and then we moved to California so that it could be, uh, or they moved us to California uh, once they realized that uh, it was a, a bit of a hit, a force yep. to be reckoned with that uh, they wanted to be closer to it so they could uh, kind of micromanage it. Yep. So, um, so we go from Dukes, which is this you know, iconic one, and then you do another one that's iconic, which is Smallville. What years does Smallville run? Smallville was 2001 through 2011. So in 2001, of course, you've got you know, tragedy in America. Uh, we were filming Smallville when that happened. Okay. I was, so, in, I was in Vancouver, British Columbia that, when, when that happened. Yeah. And my brother flies for Delta. He's flown, he's flown for Delta since, uh, since 78, since we started Duke. So that was my first call. Make, Make sure he was okay. okay. Yeah. 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 What a, well, yeah. 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 No, you still can't. So right. we're there. And, uh, and um, 
again, I'm now I'm Jonathan Kent. I'm right. raising the boy who will be Superman. Right. But we don't know that. And there was something about uh, living on a dirt road, something about a windmill, something about having to walk down some dirt and gravel to get the mail. In a similar sense to Dukes. It's it's very, yeah. very similar to Dukes. Something about having cows to milk, right. cows to feed, cattle, livestock, right. working, you know, work gloves. Uh, I, re- I recall when, when, when President Trump was running for president, they talked about him going to the, where Cracker Barrels were. Right. And it made so much sense to me because right. that's where people who work hard go to eat. Right. Because, you know, Uncle Herschel's favorite, they got, they got more food than they can right. eat, but my God, it's been a tough day, and yeah. I just would like somebody to bring me a cup of coffee right. and some biscuits and gravy. Yeah. And that's the crowd that, and that's what I am. That's yeah. the crowd that loved Smallville, and it authenticated that this child, Clark Kent, could later become Superman. Superman. It authenticated in Dukes of Hazard that if Uncle Jesse... If Uncle Jesse said, don't jump that car, it'll break. Yeah. No, he said, stop jumping that car, you're going to hurt yourself. Right. Because he said that, we believed, you believed, right. everyone believed that the General Lee could fly. Right. So there's something that authenticates real humanity yeah. about, for me, about a dirt road. Yeah. Smallville was on for what, seven years, six years? It was on 10 years. 10 years, okay. I was on it yeah. for five, and then I did the yeah. I did the last year as well. Yeah. Great, great yeah, you show. you came back at the end. Right. Yep. The crown yeah. jewel, I think, of the Smallville, um, pardon me, of the Superman franchise. Yeah. So it was a great, great, great time. And that was through 2010. 2011. Right. Yeah, 2011. And and now I do the, uh, I, right. I, seven years I've been on the haves and have nots, uh, Tyler Perry show on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Right. Playing a nasty, terrible You're a bad guy. guy. I'm a bad guy. Which was not the point. Can I use this not, voice? Yeah. Uh, right? But, so I, it's it's kind of like my Dallas. It's kind of like what Dallas must have been for Larry Hagman. Yeah. <laughs> After I Dream of Jeannie. Another iconic program. I know. I love so how that. does it feel as an actor, what you're known for as an actor are these hugely iconic moments in American history. I mean, these are like... Well, bless you. No, but it's true. It's I mean, it's um, it's people not only can relate, it's it's iconic today i mean people talk about these broadcasts these programs yeah. today. well i think they ring i think they ring true to an audience because they ring true to me huh. um i i won't i try to never do anything that i don't like singing a song yeah if a song doesn't make the hair stand up on the back of my neck or make me laugh or make me cry or yeah. make me cheer or make me angry i won't have anything to do with yeah. it yeah so if a role doesn't ring true somewhere in me yep then I won't, I won't be interested. I won't do it. But, you know, there's a lot of all of us. I, I equate, people say, actors, it's such an interesting thing. Well, we're all, we're all kind of a color wheel. Yeah. And we have a dominant color, naturally. Right. right. But actors have the, and I think lawyers, yep. have the ability to select what that dominant color is. Yeah. We have all of it. But we select that and that for whatever, for whatever could tur- time. Can you turn on in that acting, you could put up a different color depending on the broadcast? Oh, absolutely. On, see, that's what you, you made the analysis to lawyers. I think that's, you know, there's the, and I, I, I said this to, to in interviews, there's going to be the, I had the Jay Secular handling Bob Mueller moment, right. which is different kind of lawyering in a sense. Sure. Then I had the impeachment proceedings, which was a, a trial. So you had right. the trial side. The trial color, yeah. And then I've got the Supreme Court stuff, which is completely different. Well, and then you've got you've got whatever you know, uh, uh, like a pendulum will eventually yeah. stop in yeah. the middle. So your dominant color will eventually yeah. just kind of show up when you're yeah. hanging around, yeah, yeah. you're playing golf, you're yeah. with people you love, yeah. right? Right. So that's your dominant yeah. color. Most people are one dominant color. Yeah. Well, this sounds kind of California. Yeah. I hate, no. but you you get yeah, it, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what actors and lawyers and people they we we can dial in that dominant color as needed. Right. And then we'll go back to, and it's not lying, by the way. Right. People say, well, that's lying. No, no you got it's the, not. You've got multiple yeah, arrows in the quiver. Ju- it's just a different shade yeah. because it's needed right now. Yeah. And I think that's, that is the gift of lawyering. That's the gift of logic. That's the gift of acting or telling a story. If you're just joining us, our guest is John Schneider, who, by the way, in addition to being a great actor, is a great musician, a great singer. Let's talk about your music. You've got a okay. tune that's out now. Yes. <laughs> called Trump card. Uh, my friend Keith Burns and I were talking about uh, about the lunacy that we that we were witnessing and how how people can't how can you not understand Nancy how silly this looks and there's an old saying in a poker game that if you can't find the sucker at the table it's you 
Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's how we started writing. Writing. That was from John Schneider, by the way. I want to be very. I was, I'm keeping it in, though. <laughs> Go ahead, you know, I knew I knew our president a long, long time ago yep. when I was doing uh, when I was doing Broadway, right? And uh, it's it's. I was so delighted when it it looked like he was going to run because I knew if he ran, because I hang around with practical people. Yeah, I hang around with some people that aren't aren't that practical too, and 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 the difference between me and them is I don't hate them. Mm-hmm. Um, so. So when he when he uh, was running, I told my brother, who was the mayor of Stamford, New York. I mean, yeah. you want to, and he and I feel exactly the same. Yeah. Um, I said he's going to win. He said, "I think that would be great," but I mean, there's just just not there's not a chance. And I said, "Don't listen to your friends. Listen to the people. He is going to win. You mark my words." Well, you were right. And well, and and uh, yeah. So I'm I'm delighted. So the Trump card song yeah. is uh, is our way. Of trying to add a little bit of levity. This is a great tune. Great album, by the way. So go to either, iTunes, wherever you get your music. Uh, what do they look for? Just John Schneider's Trump Card. John? If you just look up Trump Card, you'll find it. Probably I mean, right there gosh. under Trump Card or John Schneider <laughs> Music. I encourage you to get it. Also, go to John's website. It's a great way to stay engaged. John Schneider Studios.com. And also connect with him on social media, Facebook, and Twitter and everything else. YouTube, all Thank that. You for coming all it's so much oh, fun. This was a blast. Folks, the ACLJ is doing work all across the country on all the issues that you care about, all across the world on the issues you care about. And we're able to broadcast it to you because of your support. We're able to do the work in our country because of your support. We're able to do the work internationally because of your financial support. And this is a great time to make a financial contribution to the ACLJ because it's a matching challenge month. What does that mean? We have a group of donors ready to match every donation that comes into the ACLJ right now at aclj.org. You're literally doubling the impact of your donation. Your $25 donation, that's where you're charging your credit card, but that's like $50 for us to ACLJ. No amount too small, no amount too big. It all makes a huge impact. Go to aclj.org, be part of our matching challenge and donate today.